What's going on, everybody? You found Modern Tier Collector, and I'm your host, The Bearded One. As always, thank you for liking, subscribing, commenting on my content. It's always much appreciated. I'm up to 88 followers. Uh, been blowing up, largely in part due to Super Rust 9000 and Fanboy Prime. I'm getting a lot of, hey, I found you through Super Rust 9000 or Fanboy Prime comments. So thank you to both of you guys, Super Rust 9000 and Fanboy Prime. Uh, you've really done a lot to uh, put my channel out there. I don't personally like to advertise my videos. I like the idea of organic growth and word of mouth. Uh, if you like my content, you're going to stay around kind of thing. That is not... Uh, that is not a, that is not about anyone else and how you grow your channel. Uh, that is just my personal thing. Uh, I don't have any goals of being monetized. I just use this channel as a way to talk about comics to people in the community and, and have that outlet for me. It's a bit selfish, I understand, but uh, yeah. Nevertheless, my channel is growing and that doesn't mean I hate that it's growing. I definitely appreciate it's growing. Uh, and, and I want you guys out there to go check out Super Us 9000 and Fanboy Prime. Uh, they've done a lot for this channel that they probably don't even know. And, and I, I appreciate it. So I want you to go give them a like, subscribe, and a comment as well. Uh, also, another thing I'd like to hit, it, was a, it occurred to me as I was brainstorming the outline for this video. I call myself a 10-year comic book vet, and there are wonderful veterans in this community namely X11 Bravo and Battle 666 Panda. It's my understanding they're two different people and it's my understanding they are husband and wife. I could be wrong about that. I still get confused when I interact with these two wonderful people in the community over on Instagram. Uh, but I just want to say that I've never served in the military. Um, and so calling myself a comic book veteran is just a term I'm using to imply I have time in the hobby. I mean, no disrespect to any veterans out there. And while I'm name dropping, X11 Bravo and Battle 666 Panda do a wonderful initiative for injured veterans. Or I don't even know if they have to be injured. They may be on the battlefield or they may, they may just be away from home or, or whatever the case may be. And they donate comic books to these veterans to help ease the mental stress that they may have to deal with, the, the mental anguish that comes with being a veteran and things you see on the battlefield. And I think that's a wonderful thing. Uh, I, I think of them a lot when I'm in hunting in dollar bins and I see patriotic covers. Um, go check out, and I don't know if they have a channel, but they are on Instagram. Go check them out over on Instagram. That is X11 Bravo, B R A V O, X11 Bravo, and then his or his wife or his partner or his alternate account. I'm not sure, but Battle 666 Panda pairs with X11 Bravo. Uh, so now that I've got some name dropping out of the way, I'm going to continue to name drop throughout this video. Uh, let's get on with the content. Now, in the Day One Collector video that was specifically for Day One Collectors, the collectors that today I'm going to buy a comic book. That's what that video was for. We did a lot of kumbaya. We did, we did a lot of burning of incense and wearing togas and talking about philosophy and the internet's bad and we need to have fun and make sure we're having fun. and. And, and negative thoughts from the internet can can destroy our journey in, in the industry. Well, we're not doing that crap today. We're not doing that crap today. Throw that damn togo away. Put out the incense. We're getting into some real grounded information. Number one. My, the number one thing I want to encourage you early, early hobbyists to do. And that's what this video is for, you early hobbyists. This, your mileage may vary, you know, because an early hob hobbyist could be a day two hobbyist or somebody that is still a casual collector 10 years into the hobby. It just, it just kind of depends. Your mileage may vary. What you define yourself as as an early hobbyist may vary. But the number one thing I want you all to do 
I need to do this. I'm doing it right now. Budget for the hobby. But this goes for anybody. This doesn't have to be an early collector. However, I think it's most important for an early collector to budget in the hobby because it's going to keep you in the hobby. It's going to keep your wallet happy. Uh, it's going to keep your bank account happy. Uh, you're, you're going to... I think the fastest way to nosedive into a term called burnout, which is exactly what it means, you're burnt out on the hobby, and you're, you're more likely to get out of the hobby when you're burnt out, is spending all your money. And, and, and it's rudimentary, silly tips. You know, we all know to budget, but it's easy to fall into the emotional uh, responses we can have seeing books online for sales or, or being in dollar bands and we say just one more dollar isn't going to hurt uh, just be ever mindful of your wallet you know, if, you, if you're going to a store hoping to spend ten dollars don't spend eleven dollars don't spend eleven don't spend ten dollars and fifty cents uh, you know stay within your budget uh, what, and, and again whatever your budget is whether you're a millionaire or you're below the poverty line, just be ever mindful of what you can afford. Because I don't want to see you get out of this hobby. And spending all your money is going to projectile you out of the hobby quicker than anything else. Number two, figure out what you enjoy most about the hobby. Now in video one, I said, don't worry about buying what you love try to find what you like. Well, this is different. Uh, when I said try to find what you like, I was speaking more towards uh, characters and, and, and series and writers and artists. See what you like that, you, you know, that appeals to you. Well, this, this is different. Uh, I take this from Journals Comics, another channel I want you to check out. Journals Comics and Pop Culture. He kind of hits on this a lot. <clears throat> and we've discussed this before over on Instagram or in his videos comics section. There are four types of people in the comic book hobby. There are investors uh, and speculators, flippers, sellers, that kind of thing. Um, I kind of lump, lump all that into one uh, one category. People... Pe 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 uh. How do I say this? I'm getting tongue-tied. People concerned, their main concern is getting a profit. Making sure the hobby is profitable for them in this hobby. That is not a bad thing. That comes with a lot of negative, you know, energy. And you early collectors are, are going to discover this a lot. There is a big-time divide between purists and people that treat comics more like a, a stock uh, companies stock um, and, and none of it's bad value increased value validates the hobby it gives you a reason to collect so that you're not just amassing worthless junk so don't hate the people in this category the investor the speculator the flipper there can be a lot of negativity and cannibalism in that uh, but you know again that's one category the the investor speculator flipper seller uh, category two, the collector. A lot of collectors tend to be more casual, I think, uh, when you're a purely a collector. And in the next category, you'll see why I, I say this. Uh, but collectors aren't just in it to, uh, to collect. Collecting covers, collecting stories, collecting characters, which I consider myself first and foremost. I am a character collector I love me some Lobo uh, uh, Lobo's my dude if I had to sell everything in my comic book collection I still wouldn't sell it all because I will not sell my Lobo collection I'm going to be buried with my Lobo collection because I don't anticipate my family appreciating Lobo like I do uh, no that's a joke if my kids want my Lobo comics they can have them but uh, yeah, collectors. They tend, they tend to be more casual people, the pure collectors, anyways. Uh, cool covers, figures, uh, cool stories, etc., etc. Uh, they're not necessarily in it for profit. They're not necessarily into it for the third category of reader. 
readers tend to not collect as much from what I've observed. They're more into the stories uh, is, is what draws them to the hobby. And readers, and this, this makes a lot of sense. If your priority is to read good stories, uh, readers tend to stay away from like the pure readers, especially older readers, it's different. And, and I don't want to generalize, which is what I'm fixing to do. But from what I've observed, younger readers that, you know, the people that they're in it to read good stories tend to go more independent company because the storytelling tends to be uh, of the opinion of readers of better than the big two. The superhero genre is starting to be viewed as an old man's game, old man thing. Uh, uh, so yeah, you know, and then the digital stuff seems to be real big with readers and the trade paperbacks and not, you know, the collected editions. The, the ability to get things without filling up space in your, in your, in your room or your house or you know the ability to get a big storyline in one big book seems to be the most appealing way to obtain comic books in uh, the hobby for pure readers and that makes a lot of sense it really does you know if, if you don't want to collect if you're not in it to collect um, you definitely don't want to fill up a lot of space and then the last one which is what I consider myself uh, the last category is a mixture of all of them, people that invest a little bit, people that collect a little bit, people that read a little bit, or, or they read a lot, collect a lot, and and uh, sell a lot. You know, the amount that you do this stuff varies, but uh, I consider myself a little bit of all of it. Now, I don't really get into the investment side of it, but I do call out my comic books that I fall out of love with or stuff that I tried and didn't think it was cool. Um... I do call that stuff out of the collection and I will take it to uh, a store, a comic book store, and, and I will take the loss. I don't care. Pennies on the dollar. Give me the store credit so I can turn right back around and go buy more comic books. That's really uh, why I get rid of books and what I do with books. Any books of value. So far, I haven't been very tempted to sell any of my books of value. Um... I don't have any thousand dollar books, but I've got some two hundred, two hundred fifty dollar books, and uh, so far I haven't really been tempted to sell any of those books. But uh, that financial—I don't want to say security because we're in a period of market going down. But that you know, it's comforting to know I have books of value that I could sell if I needed the money. Uh, but yeah, I still consider myself a seller. Uh, I read great stories. You know, I'm a character collector first, and, and then I, I also collect stories and run. I'm also a run collector, uh, and, and I collect runs I intend to read. So I, I'm not just collecting runs just to collect runs. My intent is to collect the run and then read the run. Um, haven't been very good at that, I will admit, but that is the intent is to collect the run and read it. Also, the characters I collect, I intend to read those books and learn about the characters. So, definitely got all of that going. I'm, I'm category four for sure. So, tying this back, you know, over the river and through the woods, let's get back to the list. Tying it back to figure out what you enjoy about the hobby the most. Do you, do you enjoy the investment side? Do you enjoy the profitability of comics? You know, that rush of you bought a book low and then the movie announcement came out and you sold when everybody was FOMOing out and you made 250% profit. Is, is that what you care about the most? Do you care about, you know, I've got to have every appearance of, you know, that Lobo's ever been in, which is my lifetime goal. I've consider it my lifetime achievement in the hobby. Uh, I want every appearance that Lobo's ever been in, excluding encyclopedias and atlases and things of that nature. Um, or do you do you want to read like the the great legendary stories of our time, like Marvel Civil War, Marvel Secret Wars, or uh, the Infinity Gauntlet Saga, or Crisis on Infinite Earths, or Sandman? or uh, um, Identity Crisis, or Infinite Crisis, or Zero Hour, or, or do you want to read these great 
independence things or do you want to get in on the spawn universe just figure out what you enjoy the most about the hobby and don't be afraid to get into category four where you enjoy it all that's definitely something you can do all right let's move on to advice point number three get friends involved in the hobby now unfortunately this is not something everybody can do and for those of you out there who don't have real life friends I hope everybody at least has, if you are on YouTube, I hope you have acquaintances that you can shoot the bull with, get into live chat. I hope you know somebody on YouTube that you can be friendly with uh, or, or on the internet. That's, that's a cool thing about the internet. But I hope, I hope all of you out there have real life friends. And we're in a day and an age where being a nerd and being a geek is no longer viewed as a negative thing. Um, it's no longer chick repellent. You know, I... A very beautiful wife, and I feel very comfortable with my nerdery around her. And uh, so, you know, I hope that you have friends in real life that you can get involved. You don't have to be ashamed of your collection, is where I'm going at. You have to be ashamed of liking superheroes. Uh, it's okay. It's okay to be a kid on the inside. Um, get your friends involved. I'm I'm lucky. I have two. Diehard comic book friends, uh, we go on an annual trip that I had to miss this year, but we go on an annual trip to uh, Nashville, Tennessee. It's about two hours. It's almost a dead two-hour straight shot, I-65 North from where we all live, uh, into Nashville. And uh, we, we just, I think we all enjoy the car ride, the two-hour car ride to and from way more than we enjoy hunting for comic books. Because uh, it's our time to catch up and fellowship and, and uh, you know, shoot the bull, laugh, make fun of things, and have a good time. And, you know, we include a fourth friend who's more of a casual comic book friend, but he's into, he's into anime and pop culture. So, you know, he's, he can come along for the ride. And then uh, I've also got another friend who's not really in that group, uh, but he's into comic books as well. And uh, he fuels the fire. I'm supposed to be doing a podcast with him eventually. But we both have so much going on in our lives that I don't know when that podcast is going to come. I'm not going to announce it until we are ready. If, if When I have a, a, an episode recorded and edited and ready to go, then I will announce the podcast. But sometime in the future, we are mulling around the idea of a podcast. Uh, and I will put it on this channel. But get your friends involved. It's going to help keep you in the hobby. It's going to make the hobby hundreds of times more enjoyable for you to have real friends that you can go on trips with or go to an LCS with or go to conventions with, uh, be they local friends or far away friends. Uh, I've also got friends here in the YouTube community and they say don't start naming names because you won't be able to name everybody. But so I so I don't want to name, I don't want to say you're my friend and you're my friend and forget other people. But I do consider a lot of you, um, my YouTube community friends. Uh, I hope I hope that's not offensive. I hope that's not weird. I hope that's not needy. Uh, but but I do consider a lot of you friends out there, uh, and and I appreciate uh, interacting with you guys and having that opportunity. Uh, so point four, find an LCS. And, and, I, and I said this in video one for you day one collectors, go to a comic book store. Well, finding an LCS is different. Going to a comic book store is just what I meant was that immediate, get that immediate first impression at a comic book store. Now, when I say find an LCS, LCS is acronym for local comic book shop. Find a shop that you want to call what I, you know, what I like to say home and, you know, Get the lay of the land in the comic book store. Spend time in there. And eventually, it's a cool thing. Uh, you're going to go to this store so much, you're going to start remembering what they have in stock. And it's going to help you to... Uh, I don't know if, if a lot of people do this. this it's just something I do. Uh, when you start remembering what a comic book store has in stock, it's going to help you be more efficient with your time in the store. Uh, it's going to help you to maybe not keep going to that store uh, day after day after day. Uh, you might could spend efforts elsewhere. 
at a different store to look through their stock and what they have while you know and then when you are when you feel like it's time to come back to your LCS to shop in their back issues it's mostly for back issues what I'm talking about uh, maybe they will have replenished their stock got new inventory in and, and you can uh, hunt new stuff you haven't seen before um, also finding an LCS you can uh, establish a rapport with with the management and staff and and doing that you know, can create a friendship. You, you just never know. I, and again, that goes back to getting friends involved in the hobby. You know, you, you don't have to make that effort. You've met them in the hobby. Um, it's also a form of networking. So you just you just never know what networking can do for you, be it your career or whatever. And uh, people can remember your face in the store. And maybe you eventually become a regular or preferred customer. And they, you know, there's perks to that, you know. Maybe the staff uh, knows that you've been coming there for so long. Maybe they've picked up on what you collect and they'll look out for you and they'll start setting books aside for you. Maybe they will cut you discounts because you're a regular customer. Uh, they're, you know, and, and I'm not saying day one, go to the LCS and start trying to get perks. This, this comes with establishing a rapport. This comes with, with earning respect uh, of, of the staff. Um, this comes with showing that you're willing to spend money on comic books. The amount of money is neither here nor there, but uh, it just it comes with establishing a trust and a rapport and even a friendship with the staff. Um, and I had that for a while. Uh, I don't want to name the store because I'm no longer doing business with the store anymore. Uh, I don't have any ill will towards the owner. I just feel like the owner's priorities were a little bit uh, out of whack uh, but uh, within two weeks of the store opening I immediately jumped on board and started I, I had a pull list and for six months to a year I was going m at least monthly to get my pull list and one time I went in there and there were books in my pull list that uh, I didn't order, and I told the owner's husband, I was like, the, these books, I, I didn't ask for these books. And he was like, oh, well, you're an OG, just take the books. It'll be fine. I'm like, And I still didn't want the books. Just they're duplicates. And I'm just extremely anal about duplicates in my collection. I know, right? I know, right? But, uh, yeah, uh... It's just a perk of being a regular, uh, an, an OG, you know, and, and that, those sort of things can happen for you when you find an LCS. Um, number five, I've kind of kind of talked about it already. Utilize having a pull list and pre-orders. Um, the pull list, you'll you know, when you find that LCS, the place you want to call home, uh, you'll get set up with a box or a cubby or whatever, and then you'll tell you'll subscribe. All the stores in my area require at least two comic books, <coughs> a subscription to two comic books at least. Now, if one of those comic books gets canceled, then whatever. It doesn't cancel the pull list. But um, a two-book minimum, which is which I think is silly, but whatever. At least a one-book minimum, obviously. And uh, what that does, what that does, and, and then if you're, if you're dealing with a really good, quality LCS, which I, I don't. Uh, every LCS I have in the area uh, has issues with uh, getting me the covers I want. But if you're doing business with a really good quality LCS, it preserves not only the book uh, that you're subscribed to, you know, if they sell out of that book, it, it preserves a copy for you. And, you know, and then the really good LCSs will preserve the exact cover you want. So if you're into variants or you're just a cover A guy like I usually am, I, I know this doesn't show that, but I'm usually just, I want number one cover A. I, I don't want the variants. Uh, that's usually the way I am. Uh, it, you know, better LCSs will preserve that cover A for you. Um, and then the pre-orders... So if you don't have an LCS or you have issues with pull lists, you know, you're extremely anal retentive like I can be about my covers. 
Uh, I only want variants of Lobo, nothing else. If it's not Lobo, I just want Cobra A, period. Uh, and, and I have problems getting that sometimes. I get the cover Bs or the cover Cs that aren't worth anything, uh, you know, if cover A's gets me eBay hype or something. And that irritates the fire out of me. So, I, so I've gone to a website service called DCBS, Discount Comic Book Service. And I think they, they, uh, you, they're a pre-order system. So you'll, you'll look through the, the catalog, if you will. You, you go by company. And, and you, put, uh, you put the books you want in your shopping cart. And I believe you pay for them. You pay for them up front. But the uh, the list that you create and pay for is three months out. So it's a pre-ordering system. And you're getting, it's pretty much DCBS never misses. Whatever you buy is what you get. And so it just automatically secures you the cover, the exact covers you want, the exact books you want. And that way you can kind of get around, you know, your less professional LCSs that I have had issues with. Uh, I will say, don't go to DCBS first. Try to go to uh, your LCS first and support small business. That's something I'm very passionate about is supporting small business. Now, even though I don't have a pull list anymore with any of these comic book stores, whenever I need a back issue, I go to these stores first and I shop there first before I go online. Um, so I'm still supporting small business. Uh, so, so try to go to the LCS first and set up your pull list. If not, again, DCBS is a good option. My comic book shop is another option. However, shipping is skyrocketing uh, uh, on the internet. And my comic book shop, shop.com is now up to $8 for shipping. Now, it's flat rate, you know, more or less books. Um, doesn't increase or decrease the amount of shipping. It's just straight $8, which is fairly high in my opinion. So you're going to at least want eight books to make it a dollar a book in shipping. But, you know, that's another option. MyComicBookShop.com, they do do pre-orders. Number six, we're, we've talked about it a little bit. Again, familiarize yourself with online retailers. So we have MyComicBookShop.com. We have Discount Comic Book Service. We have, you know, uh, Midtown, Midtown in New York. They have a website that I utilize sometimes. Uh, learn some of the big national comic book stores and see if they have, uh, see if they have, oh my gosh, websites. There we go. Websites. A1 Comics down there in the Sacramento Bay Area. There's Meat Guild Comics at Comic Tom 101. Uh, does a lot of business with their Zep Comics over in New Jersey. I know uh, No Good Comics and Morbius Comics uh, shop at Zep a lot. I think Sove Collector maybe shops at Zep, Zep Comics. That, just that Northeast group over there in the community. Um, there's Third Eye Comics. I think Third Eye Comics is out of Washington, D.C. And, of course, Midtown's in New York. So there's some comic book stores you could look. There's The Deep which is a local store to me in Huntsville. They have a website, but I don't think they sell comic books out of their website. Um, the Great Escape in Nashville, Tennessee. Rick's, uh, City, Rick's, comic, Rick's City Comics. I don't know. Look up Rick's in Nashville, Tennessee, and then you'll see the full name. Uh, so there's some comic book stores I'm familiar with. Uh, see if they have websites. Get familiar with them. And, and why do you want to do that? Because... A lot of these websites will have sales. And that makes the hobby cheaper when you engage in these sales. I know Midtown Comics, uh, I got, it was a 1 in 100. It was Death Metal 5, the 1 in 100 black and white variant. Had Lobo on it, obviously. Uh, 1 in 100 usually goes for 100 bucks. I got it for $30. It was like over 60% off. What's that, 70% off if I paid 30 for a $100 book? So, utilize the sales. Uh, eBay sometimes has sales. Number seven, don't, you know, we're talking about 
figure out what you like, get friends involved, uh, find an LCS, you know, budget, budget. We're talking about money, We're talking about buying comic books. Don't forget the supplies. Do not forget the supplies. They make poly bags and, and boards and mylar bags and boards. You're going to want to put your comics, you know, you know this by now if you're an early collector. You're going to want to put your bag or your comic in a bag and a board. There's a board. There's a bag. And there. You're going to want to protect your comics. Whether you treat them as investments or not, you are going to want to protect your comic books. Um, and they make different kinds. They make resealable ones. That's a, re that's a resealable comic book bag that I just showed you designed to be opened and closed without having the tape. You may want to buy some scotch tape, a big thing. I don't use the painter's tape. I find it very unattractive. Uh, it just bothers me, the blue tape. But I, I love getting books shipped to me with painter's tape on them. You may want to use the painter's tape to seal your comic books. And then you may, you're going to need to decide, um, do you want polyurethane or ethanol? I can't remember, polyurethane. Uh, and then the mylar. And then you're going to want the, the cardboard uh, backers. And um, they make clear backers as well. You may want comic book stands to display your comic books in. Uh, you're going to want comic book boxes. You can go plastic with these bougie BCS black plastic boxes. Or you can go behind me. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I've got cardboard boxes right here. Uh, I'm phasing them out because they're deteriorating. And uh, the way I stack my comics on top of each other, that's terrible for the cardboard. Um, it starts to squish over time, and that squishes your comics and damages them. Uh, so you're going to want to uh, get some boxes. And then uh, if you want to take that to the next level, you want to get some comic book dividers. So you can divide up your collection into different runs or, or different sections of your collection to better organize your collection so you can go through it a lot better. And then if you really want to get fancy with it, buy you a, uh, a label maker. Don't don't Sharpie the, the label on the tab. A lot of these comic dividers have tabs on them. Uh, and and, and it, don't do the Sharpie. Get, if, you, if you really want to get fancy with it, get the label maker. I got the label maker and I'm not turning back. Uh, I, I'm only going to do label maker labels for my dividers now. And I, and I love it. Um, and the label maker thing, you can make it as cheap or as expensive as you want. And, you know, just uh, your mileage may vary. Get you know, a label maker you feel comfortable spending money on. And uh, again, just want to say, don't forget the supplies. You're going to want the supplies. Because when you, have, when you just have a bunch of issues laying around that could, uh, that could cause anxiety and lead to burnout. And, and we don't want that. Um, and, and, and these books look nice. It's gonna, you're gonna enjoy the bagging and boarding. You probably won't enjoy, but uh, you're gonna enjoy the way they look in the bags and boards, especially when they're new and not wrinkled up like these are. Um, and, and it'll make the hobby a little more fun for you. Um, number eight, engage in the online community. That's something uh, I've been doing for two or three years now. Right before COVID, I would say, I made the decision to start a YouTube. Actually, I came into the community with my craft beer YouTube account that I, that I have on hiatus. I'm not really doing anything with it. Uh, the Bearded One, that's why I call myself The Bearded One on here instead of my channel name. Uh, and then I switched over to actually having a comic book YouTube account. Uh, and I met a lot of great people that I've name dropped so far, you know, and, uh, it, what's really cool about the community, you've got all these different time zones. Everybody is spread out. Like you got new collects over here in, uh, Europe. I'm down here in Alabama. Um, Morbius comics is up there in New Jersey. Um, Journals Comics is down there in the San Francisco Bay. Super Rust 9000. Uh, oh, I forget where he said he's from. 
I can't remember. Come on, Comics is in Missouri. We've got uh, Fanboy Prime down there in Texas, not far from Dallas, I believe. Or no, 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 no. He's he's more on the L. Did I say El Paso? I was gonna say El Paso. He's more near San Antonio, is what I meant to say. Um, I think Comic Tom's from up there in Seattle. So, I mean, the comic community is spread out, and that's a great thing about the internet. You, you can come together and, and meet people. I think Bronzeville Comics is from New York. Um, and you know, now that now that I'm back on second shift, I'm going to be able to engage. You know, super. super I keep going to Super Russ 9000 first. And I just want to say right off the bat, love you Super Russ, love your content. Go check out Super Russ. What I'm meaning to say is Fanboy Prime. So they're in their own little pocket. And you'll discover this as you engage in the comic book community. There's all these little pockets of, of groups in the community. And I think it's so fascinating. And I'm sure we all bounce between the pockets of the community. But I tend to bounce a little bit between the community. Now I've... Uh, there are certain channels that I, I support to the fullest and, and I try to make time for those channels the most because you can't watch it all. Uh, this comic com book community is very huge. But, um, you know, now that I'm on second shift, I'm, I'm not going to have time for Journals Comics Friday Night Live or Hidden Gem Comics Friday Night Stream anymore. I'm going to have to watch the replay for that. Uh, luckily, now luckily, Carlos collects comics. I didn't have time for him for his live streams when I was on first shift because he streams later at night. And so now that I'm back on second shift, uh, it was really cool on my way, on my drive home on Mondays. He does the Monday hauls live uh, with him and Paul and MT and their, their little group. I, I think it's really cool. Uh, I like the Monday Halls live, and then they do a Wednesday show, and they do a Friday giveaway show, I believe. Or no, the Wednesday is the giveaway show, and then Friday, uh, Friday is something else. <coughs> Maybe Friday Features? <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, that's Carlos Collects Comics, Little Pocket, and then Journal's Comics. Um, that is Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture, and he tends to hang out with uh, Bronze Age Comics. Which, And now that I'm on second shift, I'm going to get to see Late Night with Bronze Age Comics again. I didn't have time for Late Night with Bronze Age, um, at least live in the chat. Uh, you know, I'll get to watch him again. And then Tr Comic Journey. Comic Journey does uh, Insomniac's Theater, maybe, or Insomniac's Circus. I can't remember, but he'll do these long-form, you think I do long-form videos. He does, like, eight-hour streams just chilling and making it through the night. You know, late at night when we're all asleep, Comic Journey is, is streaming sometimes. And, and I'll have time for that again a little bit. Um, uh, who else does life? There's Spine Ticks. Sith Lordly does Spine Ticks. Uh, he doesn't do it as much anymore, but like a year or two years ago, he used to have everybody on. He used to have everybody on in the community come into Spine Ticks. It was just like. It's just like where the whole community finished the week. We all went to Spine Ticks and got in the chat or got in the live stream. And uh, had a good old time. Uh, and who else? No Good Comics does live streams where he's... Uh, he, I think he does Comic Book Origins. Uh, where he has these live streamed conversations with people in the community. Which I think that's great. Uh, on Tuesday nights you got Comic Book Relief with Morbius. Uh, Morbius Comics and Paul, PJ, K Crash. And... Uh, Oh, I forget his name. I forget what he calls himself, but he's a professional DJ and he calls himself the Nostalgia King. Oh, I forget his YouTube handle. It irritates the fire out of me because I, lo I love that group. Um, oh, I forget his name. Anyways, yeah. There's the Morbius uh, comics, comic book relief. I love that. It's kind of a... 
uh, a brutally honest show where they discuss controversial topics in the hobby, and Morbius lays it out. And I don't always agree with Morbius, and sometimes Morbius kind of... I don't want to say triggers me, but sometimes he affects me emotionally with his points of views because he's so brutally honest, but that's the point of comic book relief. And at the end of the day, those are his opinions. And I know I can be brutally honest on my show, on my channel, not my show. I don't have a show. And um, I think it's a fantastic pocket of the community. You know, I mentioned Hidden Gem Comics earlier. Hidden Gem and his buddy Dark Knight Comics do a Friday night stream. Uh, they just hang out with the chat and they do a cover battle uh, where they, they pull out covers they bought that week maybe and they get the chat to vote on which covers are the better covers. Uh, and they'll maybe they'll cover uh, comic book movie news and, and then they'll they'll kind of go over their, their comic book hauls for the week. So that's a cool little show from Hidden Gem Comics. And then, you know, now that I'm on second shift, I, you know, I have more time to film uh, so I'm going to be more active in the community from, from just my own content. But Super Us 9000 tends to um, upload content a lot more in in the daytime. So I'm going to be able to see your content a lot more, Super Us. And then Super Us does, I think the show is called Simply Super. Super Us, if you see this video, if you get this far, I know I'm rambling. Put the name of your show in the comments I think it's simply super. He does it on, I don't want to say Friday nights, but he does it with his co-host, Simple Simon. And uh, I've only seen a handful of episodes, but I love the show. Whenever I can catch it, whenever it's on my mind, I like watching Simply Super. And then Fanboy Prime does a Monday stream and I think a Thursday stream. He works third shift, so I'm going to be able to catch his streams and be in the chat more. He might even be streaming right now as of the time of me recording this video. Uh, and and he's just he's just getting his feet wet with the uh, the streaming. Uh, he does uh, he co-hosts with uh, Nightwing three hundred seven I think I can't remember but yeah he does a live stream and then Legion of Comics with Rob Fat Stacks they they get together for this a Friday morning community hangout kind of designed to be an end of the week hangout thing on Friday mornings. Sometimes I jump in there. Uh, Rob Fatstacks has porn, uh, not Pornhub. Oh my God. Slab Hub. No, why Pornhub. Well, he uses the Pornhub branding. It's really cute uh, branding for his live stream. But he does Slab Hub where he brings on these, I forget his co-host. He's got, he's got a co-host with it. Cool dude. Love Rob uh, Fatstacks. But they'll bring on these collectors with these immaculate collections. Like I saw a, I saw a guy whip out like a 5.0 Captain America 1. And I don't mean a 1999 Captain America 1. I mean a first print like 19, I don't know, 41 Captain America 1. What are you doing with that? Getting tied up. Getting tied up thinking about this comic book. But uh, when uh, the first... Print Captain America 1. Let me just get that out. The Golden Age Captain America 1 that's worth millions of dollars. This guy had like a 5.0 slab of it. And my jaw was like in the floor. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm running out of shows to, to name drop. Write down all these names. If, if you're an early collector and you're new to the community, write down all the shows. Write down all the names that I, that I mentioned uh, and then there's other wonderful people that make content and they don't live stream like Como Comics and Swaggle House Comics and uh, Alex Big Blue and Neil Collects. I th he used to be Neil Comics and Neil Collects Comics and Video Games. I think now he's just Neil Collects. There's a guy that I'm getting uh, to know. Um, um, oh my goodness. Main Event Comics and Wrestling or something like that. Uh, um, Bookworm Comics recently subscribed to me. There's Brian LCS, who's pretty much the godfather of the community. He should have, in my opinion, he Brian LCS should have the biggest channel in the community because he does the Comic Book Community Awards. It's a big service to the community. Uh, it's really cool that we have a guy that does that, uh, a Comic Book Community Awards. Uh, and Brian LCS does a 
Uh, he's coming up on a 1,000 uh, subscriber giveaway. He's going to be doing that this Friday. Uh, I, 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 there's just so many in that team. Nerdy. Uh, there's the Bad Batch crew with... Um, he calls himself Island Boy Manuel now. But he used to be... Oh, I'm forgetting his name. He used to be something else. Uh, and then there's uh, Blame Fable Comics. Uh, so many. This comic community is so huge. Big and small. And I love it. I, I love it. Write down all these names. Write down all these stream shows. And, and watch it. Then there's John, uh, Con John's Comics with Kids. He bounces around. He, he does a live stream with No Good. They do Omni X-Men. Where they break down the Chris Claremont X-Men run in omnibus format. So just another show I thought of. Write down all these names. And, and, and subscribe to them all. Give them all a like, subscribe, and comment. And engage in the community. It's going to make your time in the community so much more fun. So much more engaging. And I think it's going to uplift your experience in, in this community. Uh, and a lot of these people are on Instagram as well. There are different... Uh, there are different people on Instagram that only do Instagram. I use Instagram mostly to just communicate with people in the YouTube community. It's kind of it's kind of my pseudo cell phone. It's my way of texting, kind of text conversating with people without being too invasive or too annoying. Uh, I can just kind of whenever I, whenever I think of something I want to say to somebody, I can just DM them and, and leave it for them at their convenience. Uh, but there are plenty of people in the comic book community on Instagram. So go on Instagram as well. If you're not already on Instagram. Uh, number nine, don't be afraid of store credit. And what I mean by that is if you've got a bunch of 25 cent, 50 cent dollar bin books and you, you want to get rid of them, don't automatically assume you need to go to Heritage Auctions or you need to go to eBay to list these 25 cent, 50 cent dollar bin books. Uh, you're fooling yourself if you think you're going to get top dollar for every single book in your collection. You are absolutely fooling yourself. Uh, a lot, a lot of how books move in the community is from collector to collector, and collect, all of us collectors are trying to find books at affordable prices or at uh, discounted prices. And you, and you got to keep that in mind. And also, on the other end of the spectrum, the, the professional side of this, the LCS, the LCS has overhead. They need to make money on these books. So they're definitely not going to give you top dollar for this. So just don't be afraid of the store credit. If you got books you just want to get rid of and they're cheap dollar bin books, gather you up a pile and take take. it doesn't have to be your LCS. Find a store that uh, advertises they buy books and uh, take the store credit and, and you can just take that store credit you know it, you might get twenty dollars for 75 books you know that's just the way it is and, and that's just part of the game you know this hobby might not be for you if you can't handle that realization but that's just that's just the reality you're gonna get pennies on the dollar for your for your dollar books for your worthless books and uh, it just gives you an opportunity to even at a loss, buy more books without having to upfront pay for those books. It, it can help cheapen the cost of, of the hobby. And then number 10, uh, subscription services. Utilize them. I don't know if Image Comics has one, but DC Comics has one. DC Comics uh, Unlimited. Uh, Marvel Comics has one. Amazon owns Comixology. For some reason, I can't get into my Comixology account anymore. I think it still exists. I think Comixology still exists. Um, Dark Horse Comics, I believe, has uh, their own individual subscription service. They're short boxed. And then may maybe these other smaller publishers have subscription services. Just look into them. This is a way, so for instance, kind of my thinking on why you would want to utilize subscription services is so you got your pull list, so you've budgeted for your pull list, but it doesn't seem to be enough, right? Uh, you're not getting to read everything you want to read 
uh, and this is really for readers, your readers out there is what I would want to encourage you to do for number 10. You know, if you're a collector, don't worry about it, or a flipper, don't worry about this. But for you readers out there, you know, your pull list may not be enough, you're not, maybe you're blazing through your uh, comics, or, or maybe you want to read Golden Age books you can't afford, or you want to read, uh, Maybe you just want to read these legendary stories that you don't really want physical copies of. That's why you would want to utilize these subscription services. It can uh, it can give you access to tons, thousands of comic books that you can read and enjoy over and over and over again for for let's say five to ten dollars a month, and uh, that can make the hobby a lot more affordable for you. And so that's it. It's a long video. I apologize for going this long. I'm going to say what I used to say back in the closet days. If you made it this far, God bless you. Thank you for watching every minute of this video. I want to encourage you to go back and, and remember, you know, write down the names of everybody I name dropped and go give everybody in the, in the comic book community a subscription. Go watch some of their content. And, and make yourself known in the community. It's a wonderful community. I love this community. And I don't know why an advice video for early collectors turned into a community <laughs> appreciation video, but it did. Uh, I, I, I wanna thank everybody out there who watches my content. Be they early collectors like you or somebody in the community I'm, I'm already familiar with. Uh, thank you guys all for the support. I hope you take this advice uh, uh, with, with a grain of salt. This isn't the gospel, but it's advice uh, from a 10-year veteran that has made mistakes, that has, you know, experienced this hobby for over a decade. I've experienced highs and lows. I've experienced a comic book boom. I experienced comics uh, kind of at the, you know, I came in right around Avengers 1 before the MCU and speculation became what it was. So I kind of almost know what comic book, the comic book hobby was like before current speculation. Um, I've, I've, I've seen the, the entire, I've seen an entire era of comic books. I, I experienced the entire New 52 and now, and then Rebirth, and now we're coming into Infinite Frontier and the dawn of DCU. A DC, uh, I went through the entire Marvel Now era at Marvel. Uh, so I've seen a lot of things and uh, experienced a lot of things, made mistakes. I've, I've made some wins. A lot of my high dollar comic books in this box right here, I, I, I have $25 invested in them. And, and they're worth a hundred bucks now. Uh, so, just there's some advice from Tenure Comic Vet to you. Until next time, guys. Thank you for your support. And I want to encourage you to go support everybody else in the community.